Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. Before we get into today's video, you can see there's a drum kit over there. What could that mean? I'm literally getting goosebumps because uh, I recorded with my band over the weekend. So you may have, if you follow me for any length of time, you know I've um, released a lot of music over the years, uh, mostly stuff that I wrote and then I brought in my buddies to play on it. So Tim on drums, Joel on bass. Um, and so we've been a band in that sense that they come in and play on my stuff. We've played a few shows together, but it's been like my songs, they come and play. Well, earlier this year, after watching the Beatles documentary, which was just, I'm not even like a massive Beatles fan, but I watched it all of it, and I just got lost in it, and I had this just immense desire to sit in a room with musicians and play, so I called up these guys and said, let's do that, so we got together, we actually met in my church on Saturday afternoons for several months, not everyone, but a few a month, and just to, the, the goal was just to jam and maybe to write some music together, that was it, and turns out we wrote some music together and some really cool stuff. And fast forward to this past weekend, and we tracked four songs that we recorded. And I am, if you've never experienced that, uh, maybe you've, you're yet to record your first song, uh, I, it's hard to explain, but there is a certain level of giddiness that comes with uh, especially that beginning part of a new project, especially when that first batch of stuff you recorded sounds so good. Um, there's there's almost nothing like it. And Tim, Tim, Joel, and I are all kind of in that giddy phase of, I can't, we came into this thing knowing we had some pretty cool songs, not knowing how just as a three-piece it was going to sound when we recorded it. But it came out super well. Obviously, I'm going to let you hear a little bit. Here's the beginning of one of the songs. It's real simple, but the tones we got, this is that drum kit, bass, and a couple of guitars from me. But mm, listen to this. I mean, it doesn't get much simpler than that simple drum beat, simple bass line playing one note, simple guitar part, but it just, I mean, A, it's that kick drum's like the size of my house, um, and we were able to capture it really well. Anyway, it's just, there is, I know that maybe, especially if you're new to this or you're just getting into recording, or maybe you've been into it for a while, but you've never actually done a song, finished a song, started a song. Uh, I want to encourage you that, yes, there are a lot of hurdles to get from where you are to where I am, for example, like super giddy about the stuff we recorded a few days ago, but it's not as far away as you might assume. You are absolutely capable of doing it, um, and the biggest way to get into it is to just jump in. Jump in and record something. There is, anyway, I, I just, I can't, I can't recommend it highly enough. Um, it reminds me why I love doing this. You know, you think, oh, at some point it's not going to be this exciting. Well, it hasn't stopped being exciting yet, and I'm not getting any younger. So um, I plan to keep doing this for a very long time. Okay, let me tell you a story um, that I was reminded of as we were recording this, and it's the tale of two kick drums. Now, I heard this story from, I believe it was from one of my customers, and... I can't remember the specifically who told me, but the story goes like this. This person is running sound for a festival, and it's one of those where there's it's a fairly small stage, and there's a lot of acts lined up to play, and they're just cycling through, right? One band plays three, four songs. They get up. They walk off stage. The other band gets up, plugs in, and starts playing. So like one of those, there's not a big turnaround. There's not a sound check between from one band to the next, and all the drummers are going to use the same drum kit, right? Familiar scenario, we've all seen it before. Well, the first band goes on, and immediately the sound guy, or girl, I forget who it was, notices that the kick drum doesn't sound right. It's like, it's weak, it's thin, it's like distant and flabby. Um, it's not this big punchy kick drum that they're expecting to have. And from front of house, they're looking up there to see if maybe the microphone got knocked and it's not facing the kick drum, or maybe it fell over. Um, then they're thinking maybe it's a bad cable, maybe it's a bad microphone, but we can't do anything about it now. We have to just kind of power through, um, and hopefully we can go fix it 
before the next band goes on. So the band plays their couple of songs. They're rotating off. Sound engineer runs up to check the microphone. Everything is where it should be. The mic, the cable's plugged in correctly. The mic is right where they left it, in the correct position. There's nothing wrong with the kick drum itself. There's not like the, the beater head was ripped or torn or something. So kind of just scratch your head and walk back to the front of the house and just just say, I, I don't know what to do, but I, there's I, there's no visible problem here. Next band comes up, drummer counts them in, they start the song, and the kick drum sounds amazing. Big, huge, punchy, in your face, big, beefy, low end, everything you want in a kick drum. It sounds a lot like this. What changed? You've probably guessed it already. The thing that changed was the drummer. Nothing else changed. Literally, you can almost say it's a scientific experiment because the control was same drum kit, same drum pedal, same microphone, same channel on the board, same preamp, same everything, same venue, same room, same day, same humidity. But five minutes later, the drum tone changes completely because a different person was sitting on the drum throne hitting that kick pedal. Thump, thump, which I can't do, by the way. Um, that, to me, is such a powerful story and a revealing insight into what goes in to making good music. I talk about it all the time, getting it right at the source and how we can't have good mixes if we're not starting with good source material. Well, guess what? All the recording technique in the world isn't going to make drummer number one sound any better. We've got to fix Whatever's going on with his right foot that's causing him to hit, I'm guessing just hitting it super timidly, it, 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 that was the problem. So you could buy the best kick drum in the world. You could buy, we had like a FET 47 clone mic on the kick. You can go big fancy preamp. You can do all those things. If the drummer isn't hitting it hard or isn't hitting it properly, I don't even know what that looks like for a drummer, but I know what it sounds like. If he or she isn't doing that, then nothing else is going to matter. You can have the best mic technique in the world. You can have this, this little Earthworks kick pad thing that we tried and decided we didn't want it on this song. Anyway, that I hope that that point is clear because it that's the key to unlocking everything when it comes to producing music. If you can work backwards further up the chain and fix those problems, everything that flows after gets a lot easier and you start to become a lot better. It's not that you become a better mix engineer from one day to the next, but if you get better recordings, you do become a better mix engineer, not because you learned new mixing skills, but because you started with better source material. That's the dirty little secret of the audio production world. Start with better material, you end up with a better result. There's just no other way around it. So think about that next time you sit down in the studio. If you've never recorded something before, Put it on the calendar, do it this weekend, get in there and record something. Um, and remember that all the recording and mixing technique in the world is wonderful and necessary, but it's only a piece of the puzzle. You gotta get the whole picture in place. And the good news is you get feedback right from the speakers as soon as you do it. So as soon as Tim sits down at the kit, if he hits the kick drum and it doesn't sound right coming out of the speakers, coming into my headphones, we stop and we f we don't continue until we fix that problem. That's the way we approach recording and production. All right, if you like stuff like this and you want more tips like this, specifically not so much stuff as to like where to put the microphone, but stuff about how to think about recording and different strategies to make sure that you do get a good recording, you need to read my recording cheat sheet. You can read it in one sitting. It's absolutely free. Head over to recordingcheatsheet.com. There's a link below. Download it for free. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.